In this video, I'm going to derive the differential equation that describes the motion of a simple pendulum. In doing this, I'm going to use the Taylor series approximation of the sine function that was previously developed. When I'm finished deriving this equation, we can take a look at the motion of tall buildings and establish a connection between the two. In this basic system, I have a mass hanging from an ideal string. This means the string is massless and it doesn't stretch. No friction or air resistance in this system. In fact, the only force I'm considering here is gravity. The gravity vector will point straight down and it will have a magnitude of m times g where m is the mass of the ball. The motion of the ball can be considered one-dimensional. In fact, the position of the ball is entirely dependent on the angle of displacement of the ball. Let's, angle, let's label that angle theta. My goal now is to find an expression for theta as a function of time. The gravity vector always points straight down, but only a portion of it is causing acceleration of the ball. So, we're going to break the gravity vector into two components. One will be parallel to the string and perpendicular to the ball's motion, and the other will be tangential to the ball's motion. Because the gravity vector is pointing straight down due to similar triangles, the angle between the perpendicular component and the gravity vector is theta and the magnitudes of the two components are mg cos theta and mg sine theta. This means that the total force tangential to the ball's direction is negative mg sine theta. Why negative? Because gravity is acting as a restorative force. It's always acting in the opposite direction from the displacement. Capital S will be the displacement of the ball from center. If, in this picture, S is considered positive, then the tangential force vector is pointed in the negative direction. Now, Force is always equal to mass times acceleration, so I can cancel the m's out from both sides of this equation. I get negative g sine theta is equal to a. Now I'm going to do a second computation. If the string here has length l, then the displacement s is equal to l times theta. I'm using the formula for arc length for that. Let's take the derivative with respect to t twice. We get d squared s over dt squared equals l times d squared theta over dt squared. Remember that L is constant, and that means that dl dt is equal to zero. The second derivative of s with respect to time is the same as acceleration, so I substitute a. To pretty it up a little more, I want to use Newton's notation, and I'm also going to substitute negative g sine theta for a. I get L theta double dot equals negative g sine theta, or theta double dot equals negative g over L sine theta. Now, I have this differential equation to solve. But this is a problem. It's a second-order differential equation involving a transcendental function. It's terribly difficult to find a closed-form solution, theta of t. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to substitute sine theta for something else, something close, but simpler to use. And then we're going to solve that differential equation instead. And there's nothing much simpler than a polynomial, especially a linear one. That's where the Taylor series comes in. Recall that the sine theta was exactly equal to this infinite series. Theta minus theta cubed over 3 factorial plus theta to the fifth over 5 factorial, on and on. It turns out that these higher order terms don't matter much as long as theta is small. If theta is small, theta cubed is even smaller and doesn't affect the function value substantially. So, we simply chop them off. We're going to approximate sine theta with theta. This approximation is so handy to engineers, so important, that it got called the small angle approximation for sine. This is the simpler differential equation that we're going to solve. Theta double dot equals negative g over l times theta. g and l are both constants, so I'm going to rewrite g divided by l as k. The differential equation is now theta double dot equals negative k times theta. This is the equation for a simple harmonic oscillator, which means that the acceleration of the ball is dependent only upon a constant and the ball's position in the system. What does this mean for our pendulum? We said this works for small theta, and it turns out that small theta will be about one-fourth of a radian, or about 15 degrees. So, returning to the diagram of our system, we're saying that as long as the angle of displacement is less than about 15 degrees, the system will behave like a harmonic oscillator, which means that the system will oscillate between a maximum of potential energy to a max of kinetic energy to a max of potential energy and on and on. The potential energy will be maximum at the ends and the kinetic energy will be maximum in the middle. 